Hello, good evening, everybody. Hello. Hello, hello. Welcome. Very nice to have you here. Hello, good evening. All righty, it's so nice. ¿Qué tal de lluvias? Si ha llovido, bueno, al menos acá en San Salvador. Sigue lloviendo, como que supiera las nubes. A esta hora salir de trabajar, boom, y se viene la lluvia. <laughs> but anyway, so yeah, creo que por ahí de repente eh, algunas personas todavía están de camino. Por ahí me escribían que se conectarían después. Y pues esperemos que se nos vayan integrando. All right. So let's see, let's see. Let's get down to business then. And well, let's start with everything we have for you today. Um, before we actually start, well, yesterday we were kind of reviewing um, a new topic. If we want to see it that way, we're talking a little bit about prepositions. So we were talking about prepositions of time to be specific. Uh, we were talking about in, on, and at. We're going to have a little review and a little practice on that in some moments. But before we go and start with that uh, lesson, let's take attendance right before I forget. So let me see. Let me just pull up the list. And let me just check here. Wait, because it's a little bit slow. Okay. All right, there you go. Let's see. Where is it? Where is it? All right, so here we go. So here we are, Thursday the 7th. Okay then, so we start taking the attendance. So I start with Alison Gabriela Ramos. Present. Thank you very much, Alison. The next person I have here, Alba Suleima Garcia. Present, teacher. Thank you very much, Alba. Y next person, Ana Beatriz Pineda. Ana Beatriz, not here yet. Todavía no está por acá. Let me see. No. Okay. So let's see. Not here yet. So then we continue with Claudia Veronica Juarez. Yes, Antisha. Thank you very much, Claudia. Nice. Y next, Gabriela Idania Díaz. Gabriela Idania, not here today. So it seems she's not here. So we continue with Glenda Maricela Cuellar. Glenda Maricela, not, not here. All right, so we continue then with Iris Beatriz Cornejo. Good night, teacher. Hi. Good evening, good evening. Welcome. Okay, nice. Good to have you here, Iris. Very good. So next person we have Carla Raquel Mendoza. Hi, teacher. Hello. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much, Carlita. Nice. So next person, we have Carla Jesenia Lanza. Present. All right. Thank you very much, Carlita Lanza. Good. So then we have Lucy Natalie Juarez. Present. Thank you very much, Lucy. Nice. Next person, we have Marilyn Del Carmen Solis. Present. Thank you very much, Marilyn. Next, we have Marta Luz Orellana. Present. Thank you very much, Martita. We continue with Mauricio Emilio Alvarenga. Mauricio, I think he's not here. Creo que no se nos ha 
conectado ahora. So let's see. Next we have Mayra Lisbeth Aviles de Calderón. Present. All right, thank you very much, Mayra. Nice. Then we have Reinaldo Chavez Guerra. Present teacher. Okay, thank you very much, Reinaldo. And then we have Rosa Vilma Landa Verde. Present teacher. All right, thank you very much, Vilma. So then we have Sonia Evelyn Iraeta. Sonia Evelyn, are you here? Not here yet. So I guess not here yet. So we continue with Teresa Guadalupe Bonilla. Present. Thank you very much, Teresa. So next we have Jessica Melissa Oya. Thank you very much, Meli. Nice. Next person, Julissa Raquel Cruz. Present teacher. Thank you very much, Julie. And then we have Maria Magdalena Ronquillo. Present. Thank you very much, Mary. Con calor, me imagino. Por sí. ahí. <laughs> <laughs> en la playa. <laughs> ah. <laughs> nice, I like that. Very good. <laughs> nice, very good. So, next person. Vilma Consuelo Guzmán. Present teacher. All right. Thank you very much, Vilma Consuelo. Good. Okay, then. So, well, welcome everybody. Let's see then. Let's get down to business. As I was telling you at the beginning, we were starting yesterday something related to prepositions of time. So, if you remember, yesterday I sent you a uh, picture that it was like a triangle, it was like a pyramid with the description for each of the prepositions there. So I want to show you a little video eh, about these prepositions. So let me see, let me share this video with you. And here we're going to have like a little explanation on this pyramid that I sent you yesterday. So let's listen to the video. Let's watch it first. All right, let's see. <laughs> so next, first, next thing we're going to do after this is a little activity. So you better pay attention to the video so that we can actually complete the activity later. So, there you go. There you go. So, here we go. Listen, and then we talk a little bit about this method that she's explaining here. Here we go. I'm Rebecca from Ingrid. By the end of this lesson, you will learn how to use three of the most confusing prepositions in English, and they are at on and in, as applied to time. Now, if you think you're alone in having problems with these little words, you are not alone. Many students have difficulty with these words because they're different in their native languages and probably in yours, right? So what do you do? Well, keep watching because I have found a solution which has helped many of my students and I think it will help you. And that is by using a pyramid or a triangle, okay, to learn these three important words. Let's see how it works. So, like the triangle, at is used in very specific situations, very narrow situations. For example, at 5 o'clock, at 12.30, at midnight, right? It's very exact. It's very narrow. On, like the triangle, is a little bit broader and it's used for one day or one date. For example, on Monday or on January 25th, on New Year's Day, right? Got it? Are you with me? Good. Let's continue. 
Now, in is the widest of the lot, as you can see, like in the triangle, at, on, in. So, in covers things like months, seasons, years, decades, centuries, and any kind of long period. For example, we say in English, in July, in summer or in the summer, in 2005, in the 1960s in the 1800s, which was a long time ago, or in the past, we can also say in the future, okay? Because it's also a long period of time. Did you get that? So at, for very narrow situations, on, for a little bit wider, one day or one date, right? And in, for the widest situations of all, more than one day or one date. Now, Let's do a little practice to see how well you've understood this. Okay, now let's fill in the blanks with our three words, at, on, and in. But before we fill them in here, let's fill them in on our triangle. So, do you remember what goes at the top, what's very narrow and covers a very specific time? At, very good. What's a little bit more than that? Covering one day or one date. On. Very good. And what's the widest of the lot? Covering months and seasons and years and decades and centuries. In. Okay? You've got it. Now, let's apply what we've learned because otherwise there's no point. So, let's do it. So, blank six o'clock. What do we say? Do you remember? at six o'clock. Excellent. Blank Sunday. One day, right? On Sunday. Very good. Blank winter. What do we say? It's a long period of time, especially in Canada where I live. Okay, so in winter. We can also say in the winter. Same thing. And blank Independence Day one day, so we need to say on Independence Day. Okay? Very good. Now, let's continue to some sentences because that's how you actually use the language. Number five, see you blank noon. See you. Now, what's noon? Noon means 12 o'clock in the afternoon. It's a precise, exact time. So, we say see you at noon. Very good. Number six, I'll call you blank Friday. I'll call you on Friday. Very good, because it was one day. Next one, we have a meeting blank 4.30. We have a meeting, specific time, which one? At 4.30. Very good. And the last one, they're getting married blank March 9th. It's one day, okay, one date. So it is this one. They're getting married on March 9th, okay? So you can see that the triangle can help you to remember which preposition to use when. Now, here's some more things you can do to help you remember this really, really well. First of all, go to our website at www.ingvid.com and there you'll find a resource which I've written which explains all of this and also you can print it out, you can download it for free. Everything is free, no cost, okay? And there you'll find exercises and explanations of this and also an explanation of some exceptions and expressions that we use with at, on and in. There are about more than 50 of them, okay? So you'll find the explanation of the triangle plus more. Second, while you're at the website www.ingvid.com, you'll find hundreds of other lessons which can help you with your English, okay? Lots and lots of lessons at different levels, beginner, intermediate, advanced, business English, pronunciation, grammar, IELTS, TOEFL, you name it, okay? It's all available and it's all for free. And last, before you go away, don't forget to 
subscribe to my YouTube channel so you can continue to get better and better in English because my lessons are based on 25 years of teaching and whatever I Okay, okay, we got the idea, lady. Okay, then. so as you could see, this is the, well, the thing about this pyramid that I shared with you yesterday. So we have the pyramid and we said, as this lady has kindly explained, we start with the more specific things, with the things that are narrower, as she mentioned, and that part of the pyramid that would be at. So we use at with very specific things, as you were saying, or as she was saying there, like the time, for example. Saying the time is very specific. It's a very particular use. So that will be on top of the pyramid. Right after it, we have on. On is for things that are a little bit, let's say wider, like in this case, the days of the week, right? We use on Sunday, on Monday, or we can even be a little bit specific with dates, like when we talk about months and dates, like on a September the 15th, for example. Independence Day is on September the 15th. So we use on. And then we have like the broadest thing, which is in. In is for complete years, seasons, centuries, like very long periods of time. Yep. So that's how we use in these prepositions, like in a general idea. However, if there are some uses that are very specific for some of these prepositions. Maybe, Jesus Christ, maybe, I'm sorry for that, Jesus. So, um, also, as I was saying, there are some other uses that are very hmm, particular, like as we were studying yesterday, some parts of the day, uh, some festivities, right? And those are like different uses that we can give to each of these prepositions. So let's see if you remember something about the rules. Let's see if you studied the information that I shared with you yesterday. So let's see, let's see. Da -da -da, da -da -da. All right. Let me see. So let's work then in two groups. So let's see. Okay. So here we go. So we have. Um, group number one, Claudia, Gabi, Iris, Carlita Lanza, Lucy, Mayra, Reinaldo, Teresa, Dilma Romero, and Julie. You are group number one. Group number two, we have Allison, Alba, Ana Beatriz, eh, Carlita Raquel, Mary, Marilyn, Martita, Mauricio, Evelyn, uh, Vilma Consuelo and Meli. All right, so you are group number two. So let's see, let's see how this goes here. Da -da -da, da -da -da. <laughs> Sorry. So here we go. Okay, so we're going to play uh, this game with the cards. And this time we're going to see here some sentences, but here we're going to see some blank spaces where we are supposed to complete with the corresponding prepositions. So let's see how you manage to complete each of the sentences using in, on, or at. So let's give it a try. Let's start with group number one. So that would be, let me see. I guess we're starting with Claudia. Claudia, Hola. Claudia Veronica, are you there? Two. Number two, let's see. Claudia Veronica says number two. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Claudia? 
in, on, or at. They landed on the moon. In. In, in 1969, you sure? Yes. Yes, let's see if that's correct. Yes, indeed. So very good, Claudia. We're talking about a year, right? 1969. So what we need in this case is in, in 1969. Perfect. So there you go. Let's see. Team number two, Allison. Okay, six. Number, number six. Six. Let's see. Number six. What about this one, Allison? I like to get up sunrise. <laughs> I guess it is. Uh huh. In in sunrise? Yes, you sure? Yes. <laughs> yes? Yes. Okay. So here we go. Allison says in sunrise. Ay, ay, ay. So it was. Happy I lost the class yesterday. <laughs> Right, exactly what I thought. <laughs> so yesterday we actually watched these examples at sunrise or also we have at sunset. In these situations, both we would use the preposition at, all right? So there you go, Alison. But no worries, that's okay. So let's see, no points yet for team number two. So we continue with, let me see, um, Gavi, are you there? Or are you having problems with the connection? Gavi, Gavi. No, I guess she's having problems with connection. So then we, we will skip Gavi and then we go with Iris. No. 13. 13. Let's see number 13. We have, I'm having a big party, my birthday. What do you think? On. On my birthday, you sure? Yes. Yes. All right. Let's see. Iris is sure that it's on. So we say, yes, absolutely. So on my birthday. So yesterday we said, if the festivity or the day that we are mentioning includes the word day, don't think twice about it. the Preposition that we're going to use is on, on Father's Day, on Mother's Day, on my birthday, on Christmas Day, etc., etc. So perfect. Points to group number one. Group number two. We continue with Alva. Number four. Number four, let's see. <laughs> Number, oh my gosh, just like that. So you won 15 points, so bonus. Nice, Salva. <laughs> so 15 points for you. So let's see. Group number one, we go back to you, Carlita Lanza. Okay, number seven. Number seven, lucky number. What about this one? The class trip is February. In, in February. In February. She's very sure about it. Let's see if it's in. Yes, very good. So we say with months, only months, we use in, right? In February, in June, in July, etc., etc. 
Perfect, Carlita. So there you go. Team number two. We continue with Ana Beatriz. One. Number one. Let's see number one, the one and only. We went to Japan 2007. In. In 2007. Let's see. In 2007. <laughs> yes, very good. So we went to Japan in 2007. Years. They go with in. Perfect. Excellent. Team number one. We go back. Let me see. With Lucy. Hello. Hello there. Number 10. Number 10. Let's see number 10. The final exam is? In May. In May. Are you sure, Lucy? Yes, I'm yes. sure. Sure, like if my name is Rolando. Let's see. <laughs> and exactly, right? So months of the year, always with in. So in May. Perfect, Lucy. Nice. There you go. So group number two, we continue with Carlita Raquel. Three. Number three. Let's see number three. No way. <laughs> okay, so you won 50 points just like that. 50 puntos de un solo. <laughs> okay, let's see. So team number one. So we continue with Mayra. Five. Number five for Mayra. You can go to the bank a weekday. A weekday. On. 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 On a weekday? Sí, en week, um, weekend is all. Mm, weekday, not weekend, weekday. But let's see if it's on. <laughs> <laughs> yes, very good. So on a weekday. Weekday es lo opuesto del weekend, right? Weekend, fin de semana. Weekday, día de semana, right? So we do or we work, for example, on weekdays. Well, most of us work on weekdays. Uh, and also weekends. <laughs> so anyway, it includes the word week, well, it includes the word day, right? Week, day. So we know that then it's going to be with on. So very good. Nice. So we continue. Let me see with Mary. Uh, eight. Number, Number eight. eight. Number eight for Mary. Lots of farm animals are born spring. In. In spring. In spring. No contesté. <laughs> no fui yo. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. Do you agree with that, Mary? Do you think it's in or do you have a different opinion? Uh, so... Okay. In? You uh -huh. sure? Yes. Let's see. In spring, would that be? Yes, very good. So lots of farm animals are born in spring. If you remember, yesterday we said seasons, they are always or they go always with preposition in. 
in spring, in summer, in winter, in fall. So always within. So perfect. There you go. So we go then, we go back to group one, Reinaldo. Sixteen. Sixteen for Reinaldo. Let's see. Oh my gosh. So you win 25 <laughs> points just like that. Okay. So there we go. Nice. Lucky. Then we continue with team number two. In Marilyn. Um, 11. Number 11 for Marilyn. Let's see. School ends June 29 next year. On. On June 29 next year. You sure? Yes. Yes. Let's see. Yes. Very good. So we have the month and the day this time. So we say on June 29th. Perfect. So let's see. We go back to group number one. So let me see Teresa. Night. Number nine says Teresa. Let's see. School begins eight o'clock. Teresa, what do you think? At at eight o'clock. Let's see. Yes. Would that be? Let's check. Yes, very good. So with specific time, we mentioned that we use preposition at. So very good. So let's see. Group number two, we go back to Martita. Um, um, 14. 14. Ah, no. oh, sí, sí. No? Yes. 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 <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Martita says 14. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh. No points. Jesus Christ. All right. No. No. I'm sorry. No points for team number two. Team number one, this is your chance then. So we go back with Vilma Romero. Twelve. Number 12, says Vilma. Let's see. She bought it September. She bought it September. On. On September. Mm -hmm. yes. Yes, sir. yes, sure. Yes. Okay, let's see. On September. Ay, 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 it was me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so Remember, months of the year, always within. A menos que tenga mes y día. Si tengo el mes y el día, on. Si tengo solo el mes, in. in. Right? So there you go. So no points. So let's see. The last one goes to... Let me see who's there. Mm, Meli. <laughs> 50. <laughs> There's no other choice. <laughs> so what about this one? They're leaving Sunday afternoon. They are leaving on Sunday afternoon. They're leaving on Sunday afternoon. Are you sure that it's with on? Uh -huh. Absolutely sure? No. <laughs> no, not sure? <laughs> it's a specific time uh -huh. and a specific day, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, true. At? 
at oh. Sunday afternoon. Some on. of your on. classmates say on. What do you think? At, on, what do you on. choose? I can't do that. And they, on. So, mainly at, on, <laughs> Your call. Le ayudamos, ya que no voy a participar. <laughs> yes, say oh, okay. go ahead. <laughs> on. On, they say. On, Meli. Meli. What is okay, your call? On, on you, you go with you. on. <laughs> Let's see. So we have on, exactly. Oh. So in this case, it doesn't matter that we have a part of the day here because it's confusing because we have afternoon too. So, Sunday afternoon. In this case, we stick to the first one. Nos quedamos con el primero, que es Sunday. Ya el afternoon, mm, that's something else, right? In this case, if we want to translate that, we would say el domingo en la tarde. But if we want to use the preposition, just use it according to the first word, okay? Not to the second one. So, very good. All righty. Yes, pero aún no falta clase y hay más oportunidades. Don't worry. Okay. <laughs> you think it is, don't worry. <laughs> so, final Vino con todo word. ahora la compañera. What? Vino con todo la compañera viene ahora. Todo. Ella siempre viene con todo. Claro, <laughs> quiero aprender, por eso pregunto. Nice, very good. <laughs> Ahorita se va a dar gusto. Take it easy. <laughs> ah, pues solo a ella pregúntele, Lick. Yeah, le llamé yo que un monólogo la voy a poner así. <laughs> All right. Verdad, Raquel. <laughs> nice. So, final scores for this one. We have winners team number two. So, very good. Nice. All righty. So, eh, here we have just some, a little, well, just a little review how to use these prepositions. Yesterday we were saying, these prepositions of time it can also be used as prepositions of place. In, on, and at, they can also be prepositions of place, but that's something that we are not going to study yet. That's something we're going to study, uh, hopefully tomorrow. Today, we're just going to stick to uh, the fact that they are prepositions of time. Now, what are you going to do? We have been practicing, well, today is the last day of the week, right, for us in terms of, a, let's say, the lesson plans that we have. So we're going to have not just a review and prepositions, but about everything pretty much we have used during these five days that we have been in classes. So if you remember, we have studied WH questions, we have studied the time, and we have studied prepositions, right? Prepositions of time as well. So the next activity we're going to do before we move on to something else, let's see, we still have time. So we are going to work on putting into practice everything we learned this week. So what's that going to be? We are going to work, let me see. In wait. There you go. So we're going to work in pairs this time. And what are we going to do? We're going to try to create a small conversation. This conversation you're going to create needs to have these topics that we have studied. So it needs to have WH questions. It can be any question or any WH question that you want, as long as it includes some of them. E also, telling the time, right? Include also some, e something about how to tell the time and prepositions, right? So this conversation that you're going to create needs to have these three topics included. So how are we going to work? In pairs, pair number one, we have Carlita Lanza and Lucy, all right? So you're working together. Number two, Vilma 
and Julie. So you're working together as well. I'm sorry, Vilma Consuelo. All right, Vilma Consuelo. There you go. Le leí la mente, Vilma Romero. <laughs> there you go, nice. Group number three, we have Ana Beatriz and Marilyn. Group number four, we have Mayra Aviles and let me see. Mm, wait, aquí vamos a hacer un movimiento porque tenía alguien repetido. So, Mayra, you're going to be working with Ana Beatriz and Marilyn. So, Ana Beatriz, Marilyn, and Mayra, you're working together. Teacher, yeah. perdón. Ah. El, número, el número, grupo dos dijo Vilma Consuelo y. Y Julisa, Julie y Julie Raquel, all right? There you go. Nice. Group three. Y group three, we have Ana Beatriz, Marilyn, and Mayra. So that's group three. Group number four, it's going to be Iris and Martita. So you're working together. Group number six, we have uh, Evelyn and Vilma Romero. So you are working together. Group number seven, Glenda and mm, here I have another problem. Carlita Lance is, re is repeated here. So I'm going to leave Glenda with the following group. So this group is going to be Glenda, Allison, and Gabby. So you are working together. Then we have next group, Claudia and Carlita Raquel. You're working together. A next group, Teresa and Jesse. You are working together as well. Next person, I'm sorry, next group, we have Mary and Mauricio. You are working together. And the last one, we have Alba and Reinaldo. So you're working together as well. Pero me había dicho en el dos. Por eso le volví a preguntar. No, 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 grupo? Mary. Uh -uh. No. no, Mary no. Entonces, Vilma, ¿en qué grupo estoy? <laughs> Vilma Consuelo y Julissa es el grupo dos. Mary, y usted está en el último, en el once, perdón, oh, en el diez con Mauricio, Mauricio Emilio. There you go. All right. So, remember, this conversation needs to have three things. Deberíamos de incluir en la conversación y los tres temas que hemos estado viendo. WH questions y how to tell the time, cómo decir la hora, y lo último que hemos visto, prepositions. So, think about how to include these topics in the conversation at least uh, that we can perceive or that we can see these three topics there in what you did in the conversation. So that's why the topic, well, pretty much you can decide about it. So I'm going to open the small rooms right now and I'm gonna give you, let's say 10 minutes for you to complete it. Then we come back and you perform the conversations uh, here in the main session, okay? So 10 minutes, the breakout rooms are open now. If you need some help, just let me know, all right? And I'll gladly help you with that.
Hello, hello. Ahí está ya. Hey, tell me. Ajá. Hola, Lick. Es que no, no en, aquí estamos con nuestra compañera. Ajá. Eh, que no, lo que le, le entendimos ahí un poco fue que vamos a hacer una conversación utilizando como tres temas de lo que ya hemos visto. Ajá, exactly. Eso es lo que hay que hacer. Yes, pretty much. In, integrar los temas que hemos visto en una conversación. Right? Lo que les mencionaba, la WH questions, y cómo decir la hora y preposiciones. Ok, vaya. Nice. Ah, okay. Pues, no sé, se me hizo ahí la compañera. <ríe> ok, nice, nice. Cualquier cosa, me llaman de nuevo, no hay problema. Va, está okay. bien, gracias. Nice. Ok. Ahí está, ahí está. Hi, teacher. Hello, hello. Hey, dear. <ríe> es que le iba a pedir que compartiera pantalla. Yeah. Me imaginé. <ríe> Por eso la Pero... que... <ríe> se me había olvidado. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, 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 gracias. Estamos bien, ¿verdad? Sí, nice. sí, sí. Teacher. <ríe> Ajá. Teacher. Tenemos que utilizar entonces la W question, WH question, ¿verdad? Ajá. ajá. Y las preposiciones de tiempo. Yes. Y WH questions, cómo decir la hora y preposiciones de tiempo, ¿right? Que incluyen los tres y temas que hemos estado viendo. Ok. Nice. Very good. Ok. Yeah. Nice. Good. Gaby, Glenda, can you hear me? Gaby, Glenda, are you there? Hello? Gaby, Glenda, not here. Maybe you're having problems with your connection. All right, Glenda, let me see. She already joined, I guess. Let me see. Um, yeah. Okay.
Hello, hello. ¿Qué horas salís? Hola, hola. Hola. Hey, dear. Pues con ustedes estaba trabajando Evelyn, ¿verdad? Evelyn, ¿quién? Y... Sonia. Sonia Evelyn, sí. Ajá, pero quizás se desconectó. Sí, así me está diciendo que creo que se ha desconectado. Bueno, que se le cayó el internet, me dice. Pero ustedes trabajando bien ahorita. Yo sí, creo. estamos okay, haciendo nice. ahorita. Ah, ok, uh -huh. nice. Chivo, chivo. Pensé Hola. que ya habíamos vuelto al otro grupo. <risa> ok, no, todavía no. All right, so don't worry. Some more minutes and then we go back. Después de unos okay. minutitos regresamos. Nice. Uh -huh. Ok, good. Lucy, you're done? Okay, nice. <laughs> so Lucy and Carlita Lanza, right? Okay, perfect. Good. Let's give them a couple of more minutes because I was checking and some of them are still working on that. Okay, so let's just wait a couple of more minutes, maybe two more minutes and then we continue. Vilma, nice to meet ya you no too. Me que decir. Nice to meet you too. Nice to meet to you. Meet you. Ah, me faltó, sí, sí, me faltó. Nice to meet you too, Vilma. Sí. Vaya, ahí eso es todo. Eso sería todo, ¿verdad? Sí. Nice, very good. Nice. So, ¿qué tal por acá? ¿Problemas? ¿Preguntas? ¿Dudas? Ya, no, ya terminamos. Solo estamos yeah. practicando. Ah, nice. Very good. Excellent. Then. So. Ya vamos a. O ya empezamos. Yeah. Sí, ¿verdad? No, no, no. <ríe> no, todavía estamos. Eh, yo me metí. Esperando los demás. Ya. Yeah. No, yo me metí. A, ah. Me estoy metiendo los grupos para ver cómo iban. Ya. Yeah, pues so nosotros pensamos que estamos bien. <ríe> <ríe> nice. Ok. Ya lo vamos a ver más adelante, va a decir usted. <ríe> ya vamos a regresar. <ríe> que también. <ríe> No, sí. don't worry. Ok, un minutito más entonces y regresamos a la sesión principal. Ok. Ok, gracias. Excelente, ok. Ok, then. So, so they just have one more minute and I guess everybody is going to start returning now. Well, here we have some people already. So nice. Let's just wait for the rest. And then we start checking those conversations. Okay, nice. So 30 seconds for everybody to be here. All right, all right. Nice. In the meanwhile, before we actually start with well, checking those conversations, I'm going to uh, take the attendance for the second time so that we can just continue without interruptions. So let's see, let's just wait for them. And I guess, yeah, everybody's here now. Perfect. Okay, then. So before we continue, I was telling a, well, some of you that I'm going to take the attendance so that we don't get interrupted, and then we can continue with the uh, with the conversations. 
So here we go. We have first person, Alison Gabriela Ramos. Present. Thank you very much, Alison. Then we have Alba Suleima Garcia. Present, teacher. Thank you very much, Alba. Next, Ana Beatriz Pineda. Ana Beatriz, you there? No, no, present. Okay, there. So then we continue with Claudia Veronica Juarez. Present teacher. Very good, nice. So then we continue with Gabriela Idania Diaz. Gabby may be having problems with her connection. So we continue with Glenda Maricela Cuellar. Present teacher. Thank you very much, Glenda. Next person we have Iris Beatriz Cornejo. Present, present teacher. All right, thank you very much, Iris. Then we have Carla Raquel Mendoza. Present teacher. Thank you very much, Carlita. Next, we have Carla Yesenia Lanza. Present. Thanks a lot, e Carlita Lanza. Then we have Lucy Natalie Juarez. Present. Thank you, Lucy. E next, we have... Uh, let me see, Marilyn del Carmen Solis. Present. Thank you very much, Marilyn. Then we have Marta Luz Orellana. Present. Thanks, Martita. Then we continue with Mauricio Emilio Alvarenga. Present, teacher. Thank you very much, e Mauricio. Then we have Mayra Lisbeth Aviles. Present. Thank you very much, Mayra. Next person, Reinaldo Chavez Guerra. Present teacher. All right. Thank you very much, Reinaldo. Next, we have Rosa Vilma Landa Verde. Present teacher. Thank you very much, eh, Vilma. Nice. Next, we have Sonia Evelyn Iraeta. Present teacher. Thank you, Evelyn. Y next we have Teresa Guadalupe Bonilla. Present. Thank you, Teresa. Y next, Jessica Melissa Oya. Present teacher. Thank you, Meli. Nice. Next person, Julissa Raquel Cruz. Present teacher. Thank you, Julie. And then we have Maria Magdalena Ronquillo. Present. Thank you, Mary. And last but not least, Vilma Consuelo Guzman. Present teacher. Thank you very much, Consuelo. Nice. All righty then. So let's see. Now that we are ready with the attendance, we can, well, I can listen to your, uh, to your conversations without any interruption. Do I have volunteers to be the first ones to break the ice? Volunteers, volunteers. No sé si está lista Alison y Claudia. Nice. Let's see. Ready, girls? Yes. Okay, <laughs> that's the spirit. Very good. So let's see. Claudia, Alison, and Carlita. Let's see. Good evening, Claudia and Carla. How are you? How are you? I'm fine. And you? Pretty well. Thanks for asking. Did you know what time is the class? Class. Yes. Yes, it is at uh, eight o'clock. Do you finish your homework, girls? Yes, we did. You Alison, know, do you, Alison, do you know that today is the Carla birthday? 
No, I didn't, but what day is today? Today is, is October 7. Alison and Claudia, we are invited to my birthday party at Multiplaza. What, no. what time wow. will your party be? Is going be at night of club. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks, Thank Carla. You. Bye. Oh, Bye. nice. Very good. Excellent. So, at Multiplaza, weird. <laughs> let's go to the party. Uh -huh. Let's go. Let's finish the class. <laughs> the party. Nice. Very good, girls. So, you were actually using, I like that, some structures that we haven't seen, but they are um, very important to use, like the simple past. You were using this structure with did. So even though we haven't seen that, we haven't studied that, that's something that it's uh, really useful, right? So did is an auxiliary we use for the simple past. And it we use it to ask questions, for example, in, in the simple past too. Like when I say, did you do your homework? Did you do your homework? So in this case, I'm asking if this activity was completed. So that's why I use the past. Hiciste? Eh, hicieron la tarea, right? So that was very good. So excellent. Also, um, just be careful. I'm not sure if I, maybe, maybe I listened incorrectly, but I heard that is the Carla's uh, birthday right the carla's birthday in in this case we don't need that so we don't need this article here we just say it's carla's birthday just that right it's carla's birthday if, if we say it's the carla's birthday it's like in spanish el cumpleaños de la carla in, in english never right so we never use the article nunca le ponemos el da a un nombre, como a veces en español sí, este, eh, sí a veces eh, hay personas que le ponen el A o el, dependiendo del nombre, pero en inglés no, right? so, solo el nombre. O dicen, ¿no? o dicen, teacher, ah. o dicen ella. Oh. <ríe> ella. Ah, sí, es Ay, historia. no. <ríe> bueno, es que es... no es correcto porque dice ella. Su nombre. El salvadoreño, no. de hecho, sustituye mucho los nombres por, por cositas así. El esposo o la esposa dicen, es que aquel vea o aquella. No, <risa> <risa> no dice mi esposo o mi esposa, es aquel o aquella. <risa> Pero anyway, esos son otros temas. <risa> nice, but congratulations. So, very good. Y Carlita... Um, Claudia and Alison, so very good, nice. So let's see, any other volunteers? Volunteers, volunteers? Aha, uh -huh. selecciono yo. <laughs> okay, let's see, para que no diga que, que, la, que no la dejo participar. Julie, let's see. Hello. Let's see. Okay. All right. okay. Compañera, Vilma. Okay. It's lista, lista. Ready, ready. Nice. Ready, ready. <laughs> What's your name? My name is Julissa. In you what your name? My name is Vilma. Where are you live? I live in San Miguel. What what time do you arrive at work? It arrived at eight o'clock. When is your birthday? My birthday is on December 70. Nice to meet you, Julissa. Nice to meet you too, Vilma. There you go. You. Nice. Good. So all the structures. Nice. 
couple of things with some words like arrive, right? What time do you arrive uh -huh, at work? What time do you arrive at work? Also, there was there like uh, one question that was, where do, right? Where do you live? Where do you live? So remember that if we are using uh, an action verb, like in this case, live, I need the auxiliary. So I need do or does depending on the subject. In this case, I'm talking about you. So I need do, not the verb to be, not is or are, but the auxiliary do, where do you live? So there you go. Then the rest, it was good. Um, something with the pronunciation of this, what, wait, what's your name? What's your name? What's your name? So if you notice, this sound goes together, right? What's, what's, and here is not your, your, uh -uh, your, what's, we, what's your name? What's your name? What's your name? Yeah, there you go. Good, nice. Well used, all these structures. So nice, excellent. So let's see, any other volunteer? Group 11. All right, there you go. Excellent, that's the spirit. <laughs> let's see then. Mauricio está listo. <laughs> <laughs> claro. Siempre listo. Okay. <laughs> Hi, nice. Mauricio. Hello, Maria. How are you? I'm fine. Tell me how to get to work. I come in the micro bus. How good and are you on time? Yes, I got a win a o'clock. How good. I also or arrive. 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 At yeah. o'clock from Monday to Friday. Friday. Oh, very good. Wow, ah, en la playa anda la compañera, ve. Sí, quieren venir. Sí, claro. envidiando la compañera. Nice. Okay. Uh, but... Is that it? Yes. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Goodbye. Yeah. Goodbye. <laughs> okay. So a couple of things here. E Microbus? No. Microbus doesn't exist in, in English. Bueno, en español decimos microbus. In English, no, no existe el microbus. Sería van. Y ah, this is, ajá, a eso lo, lo, nosotros lo tomaríamos en inglés como un van. Y this is like, thinking, well, pretty much uh, you go to work. Perdón. No es igual microbus en inglés y en español. No, no es micro. Solo bus, ¿no? Es, ah, el bus, sí. Ese sí es igual. Bus en Spanish en inglés. Bus, right. Pero el microbus, ah, okay. ese sí es solo van. So there you go. Yo le dije. No, regáñelo, regáñelo. <laughs> <laughs> guys, guys. <laughs> so, there you go. So that was it. And well, just a couple of things with pronunciation, like like arrive, 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 arrive uh huh. In a Friday, right? Friday. Friday. Yeah, I arrive to work at eight a.m. Uh, or I always arrive on time, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay. But that was it. Very good. So thank you very much. Repeat, please repeat, please. Arrive. 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 Uh huh. This arrive. is like arrive. Arrive. Like this arrive. Uh -huh. uh, arrive. Uh, there you go. Thank you. Okay. Good. Anytime. Okay. Any other volunteers? Volunteers? No volunteers? Yes. Okay. 
Nice, there you go, Vilma. Okay, Glenda. All right. Hello. Hi, Glenda. Okay. Hi, Vilma. What time is your class? My class is at eight o'clock. Okay. When is your bit? birthday? Birthday. Birthday. Uh -huh. The December 2. I am well hope giving me gifts that day. Excuse me? <laughs> Just do. Solo te dije que me gusta recibir regalos ese día. That is okay. I like to receive gifts that day. There you go. <laughs> nice. Excellent. So here we have, well, very good. Here we have this word, birthday, birthday. Y, birthday. Ajá, esta R que birthday. tenemos acá no es como la R en español, no es bir, right? No es bir day, sino es birthday, birthday. Y la R en, algún, en la mayoría de las palabras en inglés es como bien enrollada. Es como cuando decimos arrive, birthday, eh, right now. Todas esas palabras que llevan R es una R bien colocha, ¿no? es una R bien enrollada. Por eso cuando eh, un gringo viene acá y quiere usar la R, le cuesta porque nosotros decimos carreta, perro, y son bien, bien marcadas, las R son bien fuertes. Y ellos no la pueden hacer. O sea, ellos dicen perro, carreta. Y todas las la hacen como enrolladas esa R. Para nosotros al revés. A nosotros nos cuesta hacer la R de ellos. Entonces es como de, nosotros la queremos hacer parecida a la nuestra. Y la ponemos R, así tal cual. Arrive, birthday, right? Y no. Eso <ríe> es un poquito más enrollada. Es como er, er, birthday. All right. Uh, so, but there you go. But you are on your way. So, don't worry. So, nice. So, thank you very much, Vilma and Glenda. So, let's see. Any other volunteer? Volunteers, volunteers. Or should I choose? Elegimos dedocráticamente entonces. So let's see. Tan, tan, tan. I want to hear Carlita Lanza and Lucy. Okay. Oops, sorry. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, Lucy, the microphone. We couldn't, we couldn't hear you. <laughs> okay. Oh, I see, I start, I start. Nice, hey, sorry. Hey, Carla, what is going? It's so well. All right, so tell me, what do you usually get home from, from home work? Um, at uh, five o'clock, what about you? Well, I usually watch TV. And so, what do you usually do in the evening? Mm, well, I play with my daughter after the, take my English club at 8 o'clock. Great, Carla. Okay, so have a good night. Take care. See you. Take care. Bye-bye. All right, there you go. Nice. So I like the first greeting how's it going right how's it going very good how's it going that remember that's like hey how are you right how's it going oh good right nice there was something with the second question can you repeat lucy the second question what was it yes what do you usually get home from work what do you usually get home from work Mm, what time maybe what time do you usually get home 
<laughs> yes. Ah, there you go. So what time? What time? Oh, that's it. Very good. Okay. Yeah. All righty. So there you go. Very good then. So very fluid, very natural. And I like that. Thank you very much, Lucy and Carlita. Thank you. Excellent. All right. Let's see. Volunteer or should I choose? I guess I'll choose, right? <laughs> Let's see. Then I want to hear da -da -da. Uh, Marilyn. Marilyn, Ana Beatriz, and Mayra. No. Empezamos. Yes, yes. <laughs> Go Marilyn ahead. Mayra. No. Hi, Mayra. What time is it? Hi, Ana. It's nine o'clock. Thank you, my thank you, Maya. Marilyn, when is your birthday? My birthday is on June 27. Mayra, what time will I see you tomorrow? I will see you at 8 o'clock. Sure, because we arrive in Paris at 7 p.m. Okay, see you later. Arrive. 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 <laughs> yes, so you're to Paris. That's yeah, cool. right. <laughs> nice, very good. So there you go. So just be careful with the pronunciation of when, right? When, right? When. Then we have at, at eight, at eight. And el ya famoso, arrive. So be careful with this one, right? Arrive, arrive. Acá está como, bueno, acá pueden ver la, la pronunciación. No me lo van a escribir así en el examen o, o en la tarea. Arrive, esto es solo más o menos cómo se pronuncia, eh, cómo se pronuncia la palabra. So arrive. Now, y, um, careful again with birthday. Si nosotros decimos birthday, birthday, Suena más como a beer, day, right? Día de cerveza o día de la cerveza. Lo cual no suena mal, pero no es lo que queremos decir, ¿no? So it's birthday, birthday. birthday. No beer day, right? Beer day, no. Beer day es mañana. So birthday. after the class. Birthday. There you go. Birthday, birthday, birthday. All right. So very good. Thank you very much for that. So, any other volunteer? Or should I choose? If not, I want to hear Iris and Martita. Martita. Hello. There you go. Okay. Comienzo. <laughs> Okay. Hello, Marta. How have you been? Fine, thank. Fine, pardon. Fine, thank. And you? You. Very well. Uh, studying English. When you receive English class? Uh, Monday to Friday. Uh, for um, eight o'clock. What time does your class end? And at 10 o'clock p.m. And what time do you sleep? Uh, I go to sleep uh, in the middle of the night. Okay, it is. Goodbye. Okay. Goodbye. All right, there you go, nice. So, there you go. So what time does it end, right? It ends, remember that in the answer, we use the third person singular, right? Termina, 
it ends right with an S. It ends at 10 p.m., for example. So don't forget the S. Uh, what time do you go to sleep? What time do you go to sleep? And then I go to sleep, right? At the middle of the night? Mm, no. The middle of the night, es como cuando estamos contando una historia y decimos en, it appeared at the middle of the night y apareció en medio de la noche, right? So, no es lo mismo que medianoche. Medianoche es midnight, right? So, midnight. Si yo quiero decir, me voy a dormir a las 12, me voy a dormir a la medianoche, I go to sleep at midnight. So, that's the thing. Pero si algo se les apareció ahí a medianoche, ahí sí dicen, it appeared in the middle of the night. Ahí sí. So, there you go. Nice. All right, thank you very much then. Maltita and Iris, good. So let's see, next group. Uh, we're still missing here. Let's see. Ta -da -da, ta -da -da. Teresa and Millie. Are you ready, Teresa? I'm ready. Excellent. There you go. <laughs> Hi, Melissa. Let's go. Hi, Teresa. How are you? I'm fine, thanks. What are you doing in the afternoon? I prefer to exercise in the afternoon. And you? What do you in the afternoon? I have a class of English at three o'clock. And at night, I like watch TV and relax. Oh, well, nice to see you. Nice to see you too. See you later. Bye, Teresa. Bye, Melissa. All right, very good. That was nice. Excellent. <laughs> so, perfect. I will use pretty much all the structures as well. So, nice. Very good. So nice. If just you mentioned, did you say at three or at eight? The English class. Three. three right? Okay. <laughs> I thought I was, I was she, she asked me. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Because she asked me about the afternoon. <laughs> oh, I'm I see. The, the oh. Okay, okay. There you go. That explains <laughs> it. <laughs> nice. Perfect. Then. Okay. All right, so very good. And I guess that leaves us just with one more group, and that is Alba and Reinaldo. Hola. Hi, Hola. Reinaldo. Hi, Alba. What do you do on Sunday? In, in the morning, I go to the party. Uh -huh. uh, I go to sure to. Okay. What day are you going to sure? Um, I go at seven in the morning to the party. And you Alba, at, at what time do you to go to church? I go to church at nine o'clock. Okay, okay. How long do you have to go to you, sure. And I have, I have been attending for 10 years. I have gone to shore for 22. Okay, very much. Alba. Okay, bye, Reynaldo. Thank you. All right, very good. So, I like the fact that you actually use something different. So you ask the question, what do you do on Sundays? So that was a nice question. What do you do on Sundays? So 
No sé si fue mi mente cochambrosa, probablemente sí, Reinaldo. Yo escuché que dijo, I go to the party. Pero no, vea, dijo, I go to church. Oh. Eh, ah, Alba dijo, church, yes. yeah, party. party. Yeah, party. Ah, ok. So, I'm Ajá. sorry, si era mi mente cochambrosa que pasa pensando cosas que no son, menos en la iglesia, perdón. So, anyway, so, the pronunciation of this church, right, church, y no suena como la U de nosotros en español, es church, right, no es church, church. Eso es lo que nos pasa a veces con las los sonidos que creo que más cuestan en inglés, en términos de pronunciación, son las vocales. Y nosotros tenemos cinco vocales. Right? A, E, I, O, U. Sencillo. Pero en inglés tenemos como 14 sonidos vocales diferentes. O sea, cada letra, esa A, E, I, O, U, tiene como diferentes variaciones y es una vocal propia. Es un sonido vocal propio, ¿no? Lo que pasa con, esto, con estas vocales a veces es que es absorbida por el sonido de la R. Como en este caso, church, church. Suena casi solo la R, el er, church, right, church. Suena una, una vocal casi apenas se percibe, ¿no? Entonces no suena la U que nosotros tenemos en, en español. So in this case, church. So I like the question, how long have you gone to church? I have been, or I have gone to church for 20 years, right? Or 25 years or 15 years, et cetera, et cetera. So that was good. So thank you very much for that. Nice. Okay. No se nos queda nadie. Creo que ya pasamos todos. Yes. Sí, verdad, creo que sí. All righty then. So, very good. Um, I like these exercises because we pretty much put into practice everything we have studied in context, right? A veces, y tenemos la, la gramática, tenemos por ahí, vamos entendiendo, por ejemplo, los temas, pero ya ponerlo todo y que, como decimos, que pegue en la conversación, es otra historia, ¿no? Ya ponerlo en práctica, pero poco a poco. Y de pronto, yo sé que quisiéramos de un solo, híjole, que nos quedara bien ensambladito, todo nice, pero sé que hay cositas que hasta que uno las quiere poner en práctica y no, no las cuestionamos, nos vamos dando cuenta de que tal vez mmm, no estamos seguros si es así o no. Y, y es normal, ¿no? Es normal sentirse así y es normal que esto no suceda. Con la práctica esto va mejorando, ¿no? De, de pronto vamos internalizando mejor las estructuras, ya al ponerla en práctica solventamos de hecho ciertas dudas, este, y así, ¿no? De repente ya el simple present, el uso de auxiliares, el orden de las preguntas, se le va a hacer a, eh, a ustedes algo pues natural, ese es el objetivo, ¿no? Y, y todo es la práctica. Um, what else? La pronunciación, igual. Y um, a veces lo decimos como podemos, o sea, pero está bien, está bien. Y no siempre lo vamos a pronunciar, o la, va a ser una palabra que se nos olvidó la pronunciación, o no estamos seguros, lo que les digo, hasta que uno la quiere usar en contexto, es que uno se pone a pensar mm, cómo se pronuncia, ¿verdad? No como cuando lo vemos el ejemplo, ahí escrito en la pizarra o en la pantalla, que no nos cuestionamos a veces eso, ¿no? De cómo lo, cómo lo vamos a pronunciar hasta que ya lo ocupamos. Igual, tomen notas, apúntenlo, aunque sea así como usted lo escucha, así en el, el sonido, así como hago yo a veces que les pongo las palabras tal cual se, se pronunciaría o un aproximado. Deje una notita ahí de cómo se escribe, o, perdón, de cómo se pronuncia esa palabra. ¿Qué? le va a servir para ya no repetir el error. El objetivo es, la, lo corrijo, ya no lo vuelvo a hacer, no trato de pronunciarlo eh, de la manera correcta. Y siempre es bueno escuchar a los demás también, o sea, ponerle atención a los demás, porque tal vez yo no ocupé la palabra que ocupó 
el otro grupo, ¿no? Pero estoy escuchando y estoy atendiendo, estoy este, también poniendo atención a la corrección que me puede servir a mí también, ¿no? Para evitar esos errores también. All right, but good. Really, really nice. So congratulations to you all. Excellent. Now, let's see. I have another practice for you, but this time we're going to work on something, well, that also involves the use of some of the structures we have been using, like, for example, telling the time and paying attention to details like the ones that, wait, that we need whenever we are talking about um, appointments. So I'm going to share with you a little document here. And also I'm going to try to send it through WhatsApp. So let me see. Let me just send you the file so that we can all have it. Where is it? Where is it? Not here. Jesus, where is that thing? Okay, here we go. Wait, ¿qué pasó? Wait. All right. So I guess I'm going to share it first then in WhatsApp. Porque se me trabó la laptop. So let's see. So I'm going to share with you a PDF and we're going to uh, have a listening practice on telling the time. Well, this is part of telling the time. So let me see. And this is a practice from that page that I mentioned before, eh, the British Council. So here we go. I'm sharing it right now in the WhatsApp chat. So you're going to receive it in no time. There you go. Creo que ahí lo van a poder ver en el grupo de WhatsApp. Por ahí se los comparto primero. Porque aquí en la laptop se me acaba de trabajar. So wait. And, okay. So while you're opening the document, you're going to see that, uh, well, it's a worksheet on an audio that I'm going to play for you. And you're going to try to identify the correct information for each of the sections. So let me see. Jesus, where is it? Quiero ver si ahora sí. Ajá, tell me, tell me. Yo no puedo abrirlo en mi teléfono, este, pero no se va a trabajar en PDF, no se puede, ¿verdad? Y no, lo vamos a, no lo vamos a modificar en el archivo, so, no importa que no lo pueda modificar, ¿verdad? que no le pueda escribir como un documento de Word, la respuesta las puede ir anotando en su cuaderno. Eso es solo como una guía. So, no me lo van a mandar. No me van a mandar el archivo. Yeah. So, don't worry. Okay. Nice. Ok. So, let me see. So, as I was saying, you are not going to send me that. It's just going to be a practice. So, here we go. Gee, I can't. I couldn't send it, so I will just share my screen then. I guess it's going to be easier. Here we go. So first things first, I have here, so that we get familiar with the vocabulary that we are going to use. It says, a preparation. Do this exercise before you listen. Draw a line to match the pictures with the words below. So, There you have some pictures and right below we have like the different um, titles that we could give to this type of movies. We're going to talk a little bit about movies, but also we're going to confirm some information as I was telling you. So talking about types of movies, what do you think is the first picture? What type of movie? This one. A uh, family or kids movie. Aha. Uh -huh. If we were supposed to use one word here to represent that, what would what do you think it could be? Cartoon. 
Cartoon, exactly, cartoon. So a cartoon, it's something that is, well, for the family or especially for kids, right? Y, as we would say, dibujos animados or caricaturas or more Salvadoran chiquillas, right? There you go. What about number two? What type of movie is this? Horror. Horror, yes, horror movie. So there we have like a vampire there. So that's a horror movie. Acá, la J, perdón, la H suena como a una J. Horror. 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 There you go. Horror movie. Very good. Then we have number three. Action. What's this? Huh? Action. 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 Yeah, action. Very good. Action. So there you have action. those movies like Rambo or Predator. Right? Those are action movies. Then we have this one here, number four. Historical drama. drama. Historical drama. Uh -huh. Historical drama like the two doors, some series rather movies that talk about historical things. Then we have this one, number five. Romantic comedy. Romantic comedy, exactly, romantic comedy. So mm, not exactly, well, it's about love, right? But it's also funny. So that's a romantic comedy. And the last one, of course, that is Science fiction. Science fiction, very good. Science fiction. So usually we use an abbreviation for those type of movies. And we call it, in vez de decir science fiction, is some people, they just call it sci-fi, right? Sci-fi movie. Sci-fi. Sci que es como una abreviación del science fiction. Sci-fi movies. There you go. All right. Now that we are familiar with this, here we have the first exercise that we are going to see or that we're going to complete with the audio. So let's check the questions first. It says, which film are Mario and Tamara going to see? And then you have the options. So you're going to write down the one that you think is the correct option. Number two, what time does the film they want to see start? And then you have different options. You are just going to write down the one is the correct one. Number three, what time are Mario and Tamara going to meet? ¿A qué hora se van a encontrar? And then you have the different options too. And first, well, we're going to complete this one first. In number two, we need to complete with the correct word, but ya le voy a explicar cómo vamos a hacer el segundo. So, first, let's listen to the, or let's complete the first exercise, the first part. Let's answer the, the three questions that we have here. So I'm going to play the audio twice. Voy a poner el audio dos veces. So, let me see. Let me just Go for the audio. So listen, pay attention, and select the corresponding answers. So, wait. Here we go. Listen. Hi, Mario. Do you want to go and watch a film? Hi, Tamara. Sure. What's on? Well, there are two action films, Mr. and Mrs. Jones and War Games, and they are both in 3D. I've already seen Mr. and Mrs. Jones. I haven't seen War Games, but I don't really want to see an action film. What else is on? There's that science fiction film, Robot 2075, but I've already seen it. Oh, is it good? Yes, it is, but I don't want to see it again. There's a romantic comedy called Forever. Mm, I'm not sure. Are there any horror films on? Yes, there's a Midnight Moon. It's got vampires in it. <gasps> OK, sounds good. Let's go and watch Midnight Moon. What time is it on? 
It's on at twelve o'clock or at half past two. Hmm. Is it on this evening? Yes, at seven thirty. Perfect. Let's go at seven thirty. Okay. Shall we meet at the cinema at seven o'clock? Great. See you later. Bye. There This recording go. was brought to I... you by the British Council. There you go. So that was the first time. Here we go. One more time. Listen in. It confirm the information you have already. Here we go. Hi, Mario. Do you want to go and watch a film? Hi, Tamara. Sure. What's on? Well, there are two action films, Mr. and Mrs. Jones and War Games, and they are both in 3D. I've already seen Mr. and Mrs. Jones. I haven't seen War Games, but I don't really want to see an action film. What else is on? There's that science fiction film, Robot 2075, but I've already seen it. Oh, is it good? Yes, it is, but I don't want to see it again. There's a romantic comedy called Forever. Mm, I'm not sure. Are there any horror films on? Yes, there's a Midnight Moon. It's got vampires in it. <gasps> okay, sounds good. Let's go and watch Midnight Moon. What time is it on? It's on at 12 o'clock or at half past two. Hmm, is it on this evening? Yes, at 7.30. Perfect. Let's go at 7.30. Okay. Shall we meet at the cinema at 7 o'clock? Great. See you later. Bye. This recording was brought to you by the British Council. There you go. So let's see, let's see. So, question number one. Which film are Mario and Tamara going to see? What's the movie? Midnight Moon. Midnight Moon, very good. Midnight Moon. So they are going to see a movie about vampires. What about number two? What time does the film they want to see start? Seven o'clock p.m. No, not... 7.30. 7.30, there you go. Or half past seven, right? 7.30 or half past seven. Very good. And the last one, what time are Mario and Tamara going to meet? 7 p.m. 7 p.m., exactly. So they are going to meet at seven o'clock. Perfect. Okay, very good. That was nice. So... Here we have, in the last part, it's a little bit more challenging because here we have, or here we are missing some of the words that are part of the conversation. So I'm going to play it two times again so that you can complete with the corresponding words. Van a intentar completar con la palabra que hace falta en la conversación. So let's see. I'm going to play it twice one more time. So listen and try to catch the word that we are missing there. So here we go again. Listen. Hi, Mario. Do you want to go and watch a film? Hi, Tamara. Sure. What's on? Well, there are two action films, Mr. and Mrs. Jones and War Games, and they are both in 3D. I've already seen Mr. and Mrs. Jones. I haven't seen War Games, but I don't really want to see an action film. What else is on? There's that science fiction film, Robot 2075, but I've already seen it. Oh, is it good? Yes, it is, but I don't want to see it again. There's a romantic comedy called Forever. I'm not sure. Are there any horror films on? Yes, there's a Midnight Moon. It's got vampires in it. <gasps> okay, sounds good. Let's go and watch Midnight Moon. What time is it on? 
It's on at 12 o'clock or at half past two. Hmm. Is it on this evening? Yes, at 7.30. Perfect. Let's go at 7.30. OK. Shall we meet at the cinema at 7 o'clock? Great. See you later. Bye. This recording was brought to you by the British Council. All right. Here we go. One more time. Listen. Hi, Mario. Do you want to go and watch a film? Hi, Tamara. Sure. What's on? Well, there are two action films, Mr. and Mrs. Jones and War Games, and they are both in 3D. I've already seen Mr. and Mrs. Jones. I haven't seen War Games, but I don't really want to see an action film. What else is on? There's that science fiction film, Robot 2075, but I've already seen it. Oh, is it good? Yes, it is, but I don't want to see it again. There's a romantic comedy called Forever. Mm, I'm not sure. Are there any horror films on? Yes, there's a Midnight Moon. It's got vampires in it. <gasps> OK, sounds good. Let's go and watch Midnight Moon. What time is it on? It's on at 12 o'clock or at half past two. Hmm. Is it on this evening? Yes, at 7.30. Perfect. Let's go at 7.30. OK. Shall we meet at the cinema at 7 o'clock? Great. See you later. Bye. This recording was brought to you by the British Council. OK. To okay. find others like... Hold on, your horses, lady. OK, then. So how was it? Easy? Difficult? Impossible? Difficult. Okay. So I know it's almost time to leave. So I'm going to share the audio and the answers with you so that you can practice with this one. All right. Le voy a compartir el audio y las respuestas para que lo pueda practicar. So por cuestión de tiempo, porque ya, bueno, casi se nos acaba y la hora de la clase. So, we're just going to leave it here. Pero ya le voy a pasar la respuesta para que lo revisen, para ver cómo les fue. Now, y today it's, let me see, let me see who's turn. Hoy le tocaría quedarse a Sonia Evelyn. Y Evelyn, do you have the time today? ¿Se puede quedar unos minutitos después de la clase? Yes, teacher. Yes, perfect. Okay, thank you, Dan. Evelyn, so I take attendance for the last time. So here we go. Number one, I have Alison Gabriela Ramos. Present. Thank you very much. Alison, next, Alva Suleima Garcia. Present, teacher. Thank you very much, Alba. And next, I have Ana Beatriz Pineda. Present. Thank you very much, Ana Beatriz. Then we continue with Claudia Veronica Juarez. Present, teacher. Thank you very much, Claudia. Next person, Gabriela Idania Diaz. Present, teacher. Thank you, Gabby. Next person, Glenda Maricela Cuellar. Present, teacher. Thank you very much, eh, Glenda. Next, Iris Beatriz Cornejo. Present, teacher. Thank you very much, Iris. So, then, Carla Raquel Mendoza. Present, teacher. Thank you, Carlita. Next. Carla Yesenia Lanza. Present. Thank you very much, Carlita Lanza. Next, Lucy Natalie Juarez. Present. Thank you very much, Lucy. And next person, Marilyn Del Carmen Solis. Present. Thank you, Marilyn. 
Next person, Marta Luz Orellana. Present. Thank you, Martita. Next, Mauricio Emilio Alvarenga. Present, chair. Thank you very much, Mauricio. Next person, Mayra Lisbeth Aviles. Present. Thank you, Mayra. Next, we have Reinaldo Chavez Guerra. Present, teacher. Thank you, Reinaldo. So, next person, Rosa Vilma Landa Verde. Present, teacher. Thank you very much, Vilma. Next, we have Sonia Evelyn Iraeta. Present. Thank you very much, uh, Evelyn. Next, we have Teresa Guadalupe Bonilla. Present. Thanks, Teresa. Next, we have Jessica Melissa Oya. Present. Thank you, Meli. And next person, Julissa Raquel Cruz. Present, teacher. Thank you, Julie. And next person, Maria Magdalena Ronquillo. Present. Thank you, Mary. And last but not least, Vilma Consuelo Guzman. Present, teacher. All right. Thank you very much, Vilma Consuelo. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, eh, that's pretty much for today. Remember, tomorrow we'll start with a new topic, always related to prepositions. But for today, have a good night, get some rest, and I'll see you tomorrito. Ah, don't forget, hoy último día de subir las tareas. So, y subanlas antes de las 10.30. Don't forget. Dice, yo no sé por qué tarea voy. Usted ya va por el segundo módulo, Alice. <laughs> ya la revisé. <laughs> so, don't worry. <laughs> nice. Okay, ladies. Thank you very much. Have a good one. Nos vemos Bye. mañana. Take care. Good morning. Bye. Bye. Good night. <laughs> Take care. Richard va a mandar el audio al WhatsApp. Thank you. Yes, ya se lo voy a mandar. Solo termino y con... Y Evelyn, y les mando el audio y las respuestas. Ok, good night. All right. Bye. 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 Good night. <laughs> All right. So let's see. Ok, Evelyn, just give me some minutes here. Let's see. Let's see. All right. A ver, a ver. It's done. There you go, and there you go. Oh, sí. Vaya, increíble, es como que estoy hablando con, eh, <ríe> <ríe> con Vania, es eh. increíble, parecido. Así mayor? dicen. ¿Usted o ella? Yo. Usted es mayor, que se ven igual. Sí. Siento que no se lleva mucho, me imagino. Como no, bastante. ¿En serio? Somos bastante íntimos. Oh, wow. <laughs> ok, mm -hmm. so nice, excelente. Ok, so Emily, este espacio, bueno, prácticamente es para que, bueno, despejemos alguna duda, eh, algo que, que haya quedado por ahí, algún tema que no esté como muy claro, eh, no necesariamente los temas que hemos visto en clase, puede ser de algo de las otras clases que usted haya tenido antes o pues no lo sé no tal vez dudas que tenga en general del idioma y hoy es cuando hoy puede okay. aprovechar a hacerme esas preguntas <risa> de todo lo que hemos visto lo que más me ha costado son los apóstrofes <risa> todo <risa> esto del, del plural de, que se lleva apóstrofe aquí de la tercera persona son... Esto es como bastante difícil para mí. Ok, nice. ¿Usted había estado sí, en clase? Pues este. En... Ah, ok. Ajá. ¿Cuál fue su pregunta? <risa> Le preguntaba, ¿usted ya había estado en clase antes? ¿Ya había recibido clases de inglés? Ay, sí, teacher. He recibido un montón de clases porque van a aprender inglés. Mira que te va a ir mejor. 
pero siempre Ajá. callado <ríe> en el intento. Ajá. Más sin embargo es que me encantaría así como hablarlo, pero hablarlo súper bien, no medio hablarlo, ¿verdad? Ajá. Entonces, de hecho estudié un ciclo en la universidad, ¿En la pero nacional? solamente el inglés uno. Ah, ¿Sí? ya, ok. So, ¿y al, qué es lo que le pasa al final? ¿Es que no le gusta, se desanima y lo siente muy difícil? ¿Qué, qué es lo que la, la, la hace que ya no siga? Quizás, eh, no, lo que pasa es que como que no he tenido la oportunidad de darle una continuidad. Ajá. Siempre hay algo que de repente, este... Me, me, este, me quedo ahí. Por ejemplo, uh -huh. fíjese, hace dos años estaba tomando un curso con esta en, en, ¿cómo se llama esta academia? Ajá. Está ahí por la UES. Bueno, en una academia de esa. Ajá, ajá. Ah, en creo que lingua, es el, el, está la prolingua y está la otra que es, ay, ¿cómo se llama? Se me olvida. Pero es la, la de los salesianos, este... No, pero quizás prolingua era donde está usted, en la que está más cerca de la nacional. Sí, entonces ahí, pero en eso de que dejaron de pagar en el instituto, o sea, porque yo trabajo con horas clases. Ah. Y bueno, entonces se, se descontinuó y como acá hay que estar pagando, ¿verdad? La planilla. Sí, cabal. Entonces, <ríe> otra pausa y, de ahí, y así. Así es la historia, como de pausa, ¿verdad? Ajá. Pero sí me encanta, me gusta mucho el idioma y ojalá que algún día lo pueda manejar, ¿verdad? Es que me gustaría aprenderlo así como Ipania, como usted, súper bien. Ajá. Pues esperemos que sí, o sea, mire, todo es cuestión de echarle ganas, quizás de ser persistente y con esto eh, cuesta. Bueno, yo siempre digo, si yo pude aprender, puede aprender cualquiera, y a mí siempre me ha gustado, bueno, siempre me gustó, pero me costaba, al inicio me costaba lo de la gramática, aprenderme todas esas reglas, y por ejemplo lo que usted mencionaba, el uso de la, de la S, la, de la regla del presente simple, que cuando es un posesivo, cuando es un plural, o sea, todas esas set de reglas que tenemos, mmm, se siente bien complejo al inicio, a medida que nosotros vamos practicando, vamos estudiando y creo que ahí es donde vamos rompiendo esa barrera y creo que es cuando pasamos al otro lado y decimos, bah, ya, ya voy encaminado. Y a mí, yo cuando ya pasé de eso y me faltaba hablarlo, por ejemplo, ya me podía todas las reglas y todo, pero me costaba hablarlo porque me daba pena y siempre he sido, digamos, tímido. Eh, como alumno fui bien tímido y entonces me daba pena hablarlo porque sentía que me iba a equivocar o que no pronunciaba bien o que al final no iba a ocupar bien las reglas de la gramática. Pero al final creo que sí, ¿no? O sea, todo es cuestión de ser perseverante, no darse por vencido. Y creo que uno no se imagina o, o no se ve a futuro hablándolo en, ese, en esos momentos, pero, pero sí pasa, ¿no? Pero sí con el tiempo sí sucede. Y, y es algo, un proceso súper natural al final de, 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 de la historia, ¿no? Ahora bien, volviendo tal vez a, a lo que usted me preguntaba de cuándo es que voy a ocupar esos apóstrofos eh, con la S, si, si es un posesivo, es un plural, es la tercera persona, es eh, bien sencillo. Los apóstrofos solo los ocupo en dos ocasiones, cuando es una contracción, por ejemplo, she's my sister, she's my sister, ¿Ah? ¿qué es lo que estoy contractando? ¿Qué será? El, el verbo to be. Ah, very She's... good. Ajá. It's the verb to be, exactly. So, estoy haciendo una contracción, pero como usted dice, es el verb to be. So, no es un posesivo, no es un plural. Pero si yo digo, what about this one? Mm, what about this? My 
sister's birthday is on November the 7th. ¿Qué será ahí? Ese apóstrofo. Estamos refiriéndonos a la tercera persona. Mm, no. Es como de propiedad de mi hermana. Eh, ajá, exacto. Es el cumpleaños de mi hermana, en este caso. Mm. So, cuando yo hablo de la tercera persona, eh, no ocupo el apóstrofo. Lo ¿vale? de la tercera persona es algo diferente. Por ejemplo, yo diría, my sister loves eh, rock music. My sister loves rock music. Acá, esto es la tercera persona del singular. Tengo mi hermana, que sería un she. Entonces yo sé, tengo que ocupar la tercera persona del singular, la regla. Y esa regla me dice que tengo que agregarle la S al verbo. Right? Como he hecho acá. Esa regla no tiene nada que ver con el apóstrofo, ni el verb to be. No. Esa es nada más de agregarle una S a el verbo que estoy ocupando. Diferente también del plural, porque el plural, my sisters live in the US. Acá sí es plural. My sisters live in the US. ¿Cómo sé entonces cuándo es plural o cuándo es la tercera regla del... del, del la tercera persona del singular y todo eso. Y es bien fácil. Acá, la tercera persona del singular, la regla aplica solo en verbos. Como acá, amar, right? A mi hermana, mi hermana ama o le, le encanta la música rock. Aquí sí, el verbo va a llevar la S. Mientras que el plural solo aplica con sustantivos. O sea, con nombres o sustantivos. En este caso, mis hermanas, ¿vale? ¿right? Es hermanas, no es un verbo, es un, es un sustantivo. Entonces, acá sí es plural. Y lo otro, los apóstrofos, acá solo aplican a una contracción del verb to be, que sería tal vez el, más específicamente el is, y aplica también cuando es un posesivo y que ahí también lo vamos a ocupar solo que estemos hablando de, del posesivo de la propiedad de una persona, como my sister. Sí, en plural. Ah, posesivo perdón. y plural. Posesivo no. y plural. En plural no vamos a ocupar la, el apóstrofo, ¿ok? Ahí sí no. Cuando nosotros tenemos un sustantivo en plural y queremos poner un, un posesivo, o sea, las dos cosas al mismo tiempo, ahí sí. Por ejemplo, si yo quisiera decir, my sister's, acá, my sister's house is big. Quizás de aquí viene un poquito la confusión. Acá tengo un plural, pero también tengo una posesión. So, por eso es que aquí tengo la S del plural, y solo agrego la, el apóstrofo del posesivo. Ya no agrego otra S. Porque es como redundante escribir otra S acá. Y porque no la voy a pronunciar siquiera. O sea, no voy a decir my sisters, right? Como que estoy llamando a, a mis mascotas. No, uh, no, vea. Entonces, esta S la borro, right? Si yo tengo un plural... Cualquier sustantivo que vaya en plural o un nombre que termine en el, solo agrego el apóstrofo y nada más. ¿vale? Ya no necesito traerse. Pero eso es en el caso de que, por ejemplo, aquí tengo un plural y quiero agregar aparte de eso el posesivo. There you go. No, no sé si queda un poquito más claro ya con esto. Sí, sí. De sí. hecho, cuando usted lo explicó en la clase, uh -huh. eh, y lo acaba de explicar, lo comprendo, pero como usted dijo, uh, ya cuando uno lo va a poner en práctica o va a ser un diálogo Ahí o algo. Se le traban los cables aún. <risa> ok, ya el hamster ya se queda ahí. Difícil. 
<risa> cabal, cabal. Pero sí, estoy aprendiendo mucho. Eh, Qué bueno. Incluso he comprendido muchas cosas que quizás no las asimilaba en otras clases. Entonces ah. me, me encanta cómo usted explica. Qué bueno, que me alegra, de, de verdad que me da gusto, Evelyn, que, que, que le guste la clase, que, que me diga que está aprendiendo, y porque bueno, al final es la, la mayor satisfacción de un docente es eso, ¿no? que el alumno aprenda, que, que sea de aprendizaje y pues que, que le gusten las clases. Así que, bueno, cualquier cosa, y nunca dude en preguntarme, siempre estoy en la orden. Usted me puede escribir, mire, teacher, no sé, no entiendo, o no, si, te, si tendrá algún material por ahí extra. Eh, si no lo tengo, yo se lo consigo, yo se lo puedo pasar. Y pues nada, okay. pues, estamos a la orden. Y pues qué bueno, qué bueno que esté aprendiendo y, y pues siga así, no se dé por vencer. Teacher, solo una cosa más. Sí, digo. Fíjese que yo... Me siento así como apenada con los equipos, porque siempre que hacemos equipos, este... Sí, la conexión. Eh, mi, inter, ajá, mi, ah. mi internet me saca y todo lo demás, aunque uh -huh. estoy este, tratando de resolver eso, pero posiblemente uh -huh. hasta el siguiente mes lo haga. Entonces, uh -huh. eh, por ahora, pues ni modo. Me siento sí. como que quedo mal con las compañeras y todo eso, ¿verdad? Ajá, uh ajá. -huh. Uh -huh. este, es, es algo fuera de mi alcance. Sí, por no. Por este momento. Sí, yo lo entiendo, porque yo, bueno, he notado eso, que a veces eh, se queda ahí como conectada, pero yo sé que está teniendo problemas de, de conexión o algo, y de repente se desconecta, o se sale del grupo, eh, pero yo entiendo que ahí, sí, por mi modo, ¿verdad? son cositas que, que ya se salen de nuestras manos, y pues nada, ¿verdad? no se sienta mal, por lo menos de mi parte, yo no... no no la dejo, digamos, en una nota o no es que yo diga, ah, no trabajó, sino que no, yo entiendo que es un problema que, que ni modo, ¿verdad? que es de conexión. Ok, muchas gracias. Nice. Ok, Evelyn. <risa> un gusto entonces haber, bueno, platicado con usted, haber podido resolver estas dudas y pues nada, I'll see you tomorrow and well, have a good night. Gracias, igualmente. Ok, thank you. Gracias. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 bye.